see entity seed here. And step four, right after adaptations and right before entity links. Remember that session manager receives a request and it only trusts on that request if it's, com if it's coming from a SIP entity. Otherwise, it, that it pretty much re rejects the request. And also remember that even your session manager itself is right now defined in your lab as a SIP entity. Because the truth is that actually the SM100 is what's defined right now as a SIP entity. Okay, routing. You go to the routing menu and that's where you create SIP entities. Why are we talking about these SIP entities right now? Well, because you're gonna need to define a SIP entity for your CM, right? So for entities like, uh, such as CM, uh, release 6.2 offered an improvement with call admission control. And the improvement was, remember what call admission control is? Bandwidth, bandwidth right? The bandwidth control. threshold. Right. Yeah, in okay. CM, if you configure in CM, it's a bandwidth threshold between network regions. If you do it in session manager, it's a bandwidth threshold between locations. So if you have CM and session manager, the question that you may have is, okay, where do I do it? Do I do it in CM? Or do I do it in session manner? And the feature, the new improvement in 6.2 is that you could have both CM and session manner doing it at the same time and they share that information. So you have, you have the, the option to have CM and session manner sharing control of call admission control. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to have CM and session manager sharing that control? Think about this. CM is not aware of all the calls. Exactly. CM is not aware of all the calls, especially the SIP calls that have no relation with a CM station. And the same thing happens for session manager. Session manager is not aware of all those calls that are happening just through CM and that might involve bandwidth, right? Like for example, you, you're absolutely right. Like think about this, for example, you have a here a CM, a main CM, and maybe here in this location you have an H23 phone. And then in another location on a branch, this is a branch, you have a H323 phone, and maybe some SIP phones. And if this H23 phone is trying to call, I mean, there is a session manager here in the main. If this H23 phone wants to call this other H23 phone, that never touches CM. That never touches session manager, sorry. Right? It goes like this for signaling purposes and then directly between them for media. But they're using this pipe. They're using bandwidth between these two locations, and session manager has no idea. So it's always a good idea to have these two elements talking to one another, you know? Um, in this case, CM would tell Session Matter, hey, Session Matter, there's some bandwidth being used. So Session Matter is able to update the tables related to bandwidth usage. And also, if, it's, if the case is a SIP phone with no relation to CM, placing a call, I mean, same thing could happen, you know? That CM is not involved at all. Uh, at all. So session manager could inform CM about bandwidth being used. And that's the new improvement in release 6.2. And they do it with some extra fields that you'll see only for CM. And if you put a check mark here under these two fields, that's what you're saying. That you want session manager to support call admission control, but also, sorry, that you want DCM to support call admission control, but also you want CM to share uh, the bandwidth control with session manager. Again, this only matters if you're configuring call admission control. Otherwise, just forget about those parameters. They don't matter. Another improvement with release 6.2, I mean, we're already in 7, but another improvement with 6.2 was SIP responses to an options request. So Avaya quickly realized that some third party applications didn't know that they had to answer 200K to an options request. 
because that's an Avaya thing. Remember that Avaya picked the, the options request for monitoring purposes, but that's not a part of the SIP standard. So they were sending option requests to third party applications, and the applications were up, but they were not answering with a 200 OK. And then Session Mara thought the applications were down. So now what you could do here is create kind of an alias for whatever the application answers. And it's, what you do here is that the alias, uh, that alias is equivalent to a 200 OK. This is not a good example, by the way. Let me show you a better example. I don't like the way they do it there in the slide. What this is saying, I mean, let me go to SIP entities, create a new SIP entity. Let's suppose that this one is for CM. An IP address, I don't care about the IP address right now. Type is gonna be CM. And I'm doing this just so that I have those fields. This, uh, these are the fields I'm talking about. Well, first of all, the two fields that I talk about admission control, call admission control. If I select the two of them, I would be saying both DCM and session manager, or session managers, in case I had two, I only have one right now in this lab, are gonna share control of the bounty. And then the other uh, parameter I'm talking about is this one, SIP responses to an option request. I mean, in this case, CM does know that should answer 200 okay to an options request, but if this was a third party SIP entity, what I could do is say, hey, whatever that SIP entity answers when I send an options request, when session man sends an options request, make it look as if it's a 200 okay. So, um, if the, if the entity answers with something like, hey, 200, all good. I mean, I'm being silly here because no entity will answer like this. Mm -hmm. But if that's what the entity answers, what you're saying here is that that's equivalent to a 200 OK for session man. So session man knows that the entity is up. <laughs> yeah. You see, so you now know, or session man will know that that's equivalent to a 200 OK, so we consider that the SIP entity is up. It's a parameter uh, that's useful for third-party SIP entities, not for Avaya SIP entities, because all Avaya entities know they should answer 200K to an options request. I cancel that, and that's what this slide's about, page 128. A quick review, which statements are true of SIP entities? Two is actually, I mean, B is actually not true. Why? Because endpoints are not SIP entities. Right. Remember? Right. Right. Phones, not SIP entities. So B is not true. A is true. A is true. A is true, because it's a domain. Everything has a domain. What about C? Can Can be session manager actually doing the monitoring? Yeah. C is yeah. Session manager is the one that sends the options request. So C, C is, is true. Yes C. What about D? No. We're, we're about to add CM. Yeah. As oh, a SIP yeah, entity. yeah, so even a Pavai applications, yes, they have to be added as a SIP entity. Every application oh. that wants to communicate with Session Man needs to be added as a so SIP entity. So AC and D? AC and D, yeah. Entity links. Every time 